Hey there, I'm Dave, also known as the Notion Coach, and this is gonna be a short video, one new update to Notion's status property. We're gonna get into what that looks like, how it's different, what you might wanna think about with your boards specifically, and some things to keep in mind. Very excited about this. It's a minor update, but could be very useful, especially when it comes to aligning different types of projects or different types of statuses into three main groups, which are not started, working, and done. Okay, so before we check out the new status property and what that looks like, we're gonna create a, the previous version just to, so that we can compare between old and new. So if I create a database, we're gonna make this a board and we're going to make a brand new database and you'll see here this is the typical not started in progress completed status properties that we're used to we've got these that are off by default but standard once we move these over let's hide this we kind of use that kanban workflow where we move tasks along as they're getting closer to being completed and this is specifically a board view where we've got a quick overview of where say a project is or where a particular set of actions are in the pipeline or in the process. One of the issues or challenges with this setup, and this is not just a Notion thing, this is just any tool that uses a board, whether it's Trello, ClickUp, whatever, is different teams have different naming conventions. For example, if you're a YouTube creator, you might have several different statuses from editing to shooting to prepping research and these different naming conventions could cause some friction because we don't quite know where we are in the process and something like editing is that in progress is that its own category there's some gray areas there so this update to notion is really about standardizing three statuses for in this case tasks and those statuses are to do, in progress, and complete. So we're gonna get into how that works in a second. And it also allows for customization, so you're not limited to those three options. You still can have several different statuses, but the key thing there is organizing them into categories. So if we go to forward slash database and board view, we're gonna create a brand new database, we'll call this my new tasks. We'll notice a few things that are different. Particularly, we've got these three defaults. In contrast to the previous version, now we have to do in progress and complete. So these are the three default phases of whether you're doing tasks or using this in another format. But let's dive a little bit deeper to customize this. And especially if you have a workflow that you have multiple statuses that don't quite fall into these three categories, there's a way to customize it to fit that workflow. So if we go into the card here, actually what we're gonna do first is go into properties. So you'll see here, we've got name, who it's assigned to, and status, so not much different there. You'll notice status is the new property. So previously, when we had a board and we had statuses, those would be using a select property, which is still available. So if we were to open one of these and add a property, and go into type, you'll see here that the select option is still there, but now we have status, which is formatted in this way. Now we're gonna take a look at the updated status property, what that looks like, and most importantly, how to customize it past the three default properties. So if we go in to this page and type in forward slash database, and we're going to set this to a board view, we'll choose to create a brand new database. What you'll notice is we've got three properties by default. We've got to do, in progress, and complete. This is really meant to streamline creating a board, thinking of users that are new to Notion, maybe new to project management, or new to the Kanban model of moving tasks from to do to in progress to complete. It's really meant to make this process a lot easier while still maintaining the option to customize this four workflows that maybe have six or seven or eight different or phases before they get to quote unquote done. So we're gonna take a look at how that works next. So if we go into this card, we'll notice here, this is the new property. It's called status and it's, if you'll notice it's different from the status, I'm sorry, the select property, which is that drop down toggle icon. And that is still an option. So if we, call this 
status alt. We still have the option to use like the tagging framework and organize a board that way, but status is a little bit more refined for a couple of reasons. If we go into the status property, we've got the three not started in progress and done. These are the three by default, but to make some customizations, we need to go one level deeper. So if we go and click on status and edit property, what we're going to be able to do is add additional phases or statuses to this and organize them into one of these three categories. So for example, if we're in to do and we've got not started, maybe we've got a backlog here or yeah, so we've got backlog that's still in the to do category for in progress. Let's say we've got in review, we've got editing search, and then for complete, let's say we have an archive status as well. A couple things to note here is if we're using the board, you'll notice in the previous board, we still only have the three categories because it's almost treating them as buckets, even though we have more than three statuses. So a couple things we want to consider here is if we go back into edit, the status that's at the very top of the category is what's going to be the default. So if we're moving tasks from one column to another, it's going to de default to say backlog, research and archive, which we may not want. So what we want to do is just kind of reorder these so that we can put the default at the very top, let's say in progress at the top and then not started is at the top as well. So that way, when I move card one over, it's now in progress. So something, something to keep in mind there. If we go into the original board view and go to properties, we're going to turn on the status. You'll see here we've got status property showing. But if I go one level further in and change show as to the checkbox, you'll now see the checkbox populating in the card. So for example, if we're in to do and we quickly want to check this as complete, it's going to automatically move to that complete column. One limitation here is that if you, for example, card two is moved to in progress, you have that third option, which basically means the task is in progress and shown with that dash in the middle of the checkbox. There's no way to manually tick the box for that option. You do have to either change the status or drag it into that column. So a limitation there, but generally a welcome update because prior to this, a lot of workflows who were accommodating both checkboxes to mark something as done or statuses had two different properties. So could get unwieldy to manage in terms of keeping a workspace and having an understanding of whether tasks are complete or incomplete, things like that. Generally welcome changes. The way that you are going to know and distinguish between status properties and the previous select property is the status property kind of has that rounded oval shape versus the select property, which is, let's just see what that looks like. If I go into this, it's like that more re rectangular view. So if you have a database with multiple properties and you're seeing them visible in the same view, that's just a way to distinguish between the two. So that's just a quick overview of the new status property. Let me know what you think. I'm going to be playing around with this and updating some templates as well. So I'm curious to hear how you feel about it, but otherwise hope that's helpful and see you in the next video.